I think the first theme already is a way to get into this kind of music and it makes you feel like in, on the countryside already when you play that first little theme, I think. I think that also the way we were working on it is that we took sort of the structure of the beginning of the exposition of the first movement, took those themes and we basically improvise the transitions and we try to play to bring in those themes so that there's something that's connected to the Beethoven but a lot of the improvisation has to do with maybe impressions of country music of pastoral music of other Beethoven pieces Beethoven's pastoral is, is one of those war horses you know it's like one of these great iconic pieces of music you know I remember when I was you know, much younger and starting to really get into Beethoven. Honestly, it was not my favorite symphony because it wasn't as crazy or violent. But later, I started to appreciate it, especially because I saw that what he was doing was so radical. Sort of, it's like a, an ode to nature, but the actual forms of all the movements as a totality is, is something that was new in music at that time. Right, but it's funny that you say about, you know, I played it when I was a child. I played it in the youth symphony mm -hmm. orchestra or something. The funny thing is that at the same time he wrote, almost at the same time he wrote the fifth symphony, which was my favorite too, mm -hmm. actually. But now my son comes home and says, Pastorale is my favorite symphony. I was <laughs> like, how did you get to this, you know? I always liked the, um, the stories about Beethoven, when how he composed and how he changed apartments all the time and the housekeepers were appalled at how he lived. But at the same time, he liked to take these long walks through the Vienna woods, which inspired him. And he would be seen walking in nature, communing with his music, but also with the birds and all right. the sounds. Which and, you hear in that symphony, actually. Right, and yeah. it's really part of the romantic movement, right. uh, not just in music, but in poetry, this sort of glorification of nature, awareness of nature, respect for nature, and trying to put those feelings into the music itself. Yeah, and I think this should come back today, actually, big time. And I see this also in my children, it's like going that way. It's very important today. Absolutely. I think. It's yeah. the survival of, of all of us, depends on that. Being a part of the festival, of the Beethoven Festival anniversary 2020, and making this symphony like a milestone or something, like a point where everybody can connect to, uh, is a great idea. And I think as musicians, I mean, it's wonderful that we can use our music, our talents, to sort of combine that with a social consciousness. It's something that, you know, there's always that debate That's with right. artists, whether or not they should politicize their art or whether or not there's certain things that transcend that politics. But I think in a situation like this, when we're talking about Mother Nature, it should be beyond politics. It shouldn't be a political question. Right. And using music and Beethoven as sort of this vehicle to educate people and to make people conscious, I think is a beautiful idea. I think music should be politically too. <laughs> it should be. Beethoven was aware of all those things, as many musicians are, because they live in the real world. Right. And so to use our art form to, to try to improve things is definitely, I think it's, it's important. It's important, yeah. Be part of the Beethoven Pastorale project and BTHVN 2020. Stand up for the preservation of nature with your pastoral music.